My name is Jane Metcalf, and I'm the founder of Protolife. Protolife is a uh, it's a media company. It's a I publish a weekly newsletter. I have a website. I've published a book, and we do events from time to time about how technology is transforming human biology. After leaving Wired Magazine, which I'd founded with my partner, uh, we made a series of investments, including one in a chocolate factory. There, I began thinking about science and nutrition, agriculture, and human health. I ultimately ended up having to address the declining health of my uh, father, stepfather, and mother, which led me to think about the changes that were happening at the leading edge of neuroscience. I realized that technology had advanced the field of neuroscience in astonishing ways that I could never have imagined before. And when I went to conferences with leading edge developers of scientific solutions and technological solutions, they reminded me of the same kind of people with the same kind of energy and the same kind of opportunities in front of them as the original digital revolutionaries had uh, during the Wired years. The deeper I looked, the more similarities I saw between the digital revolution and what I call the neo-biological revolution. So the neo-biological revolution is basically new biology, right? So what are the new tools that allow us to think about and understand and manipulate biology in new ways? And why is that a revolution? Because it's upending not just how we do science and how we do medicine, but it's upending how we think about food, how we think about our health, and how we think about our possibilities for engineering our own health. It's kind of an extraordinary thing to be at a frontier, to be at a crossroads of what I thought at the time was the biggest story of our times, which was the digital revolution. And then here I am again, literally 25 years later, standing at the same kind of crossroads. You know, the digital revolution transformed our external world. It transformed the way we do business. It transformed the financial markets. It transformed our educational system. It transformed our civic society. This is about transforming ourselves. This is about transforming our own bodies, and then beyond that, our own biology and our own evolution. I think it's really important that we be talking about that. We live in such an interesting time. The idea that we could live to 80 or 90 is not uncommon, but you know, what is our condition in, in that age range? And you know, my, my grandmothers both lived to be 97, but I can't say they were having a lot of fun. Uh, they were in pain, you know, they lacked mobility. One of them had dementia. When you ask people, you know, hey, want to live to 100? Most people think not which is crazy. And I think we now have the tools to make the 80s and 90s and 100s to be much, much better for people. You know, it starts with simple things like, are you eating well? Are you resting? Are you getting enough exercise? Do you get enough mobility? But the idea that we could postpone or eliminate the diseases of aging is incredibly compelling. I worry, you know, the digital revolution unleashed this sort of nowness this sort of everything is right this second, what's the latest, newest, whatever, and whatever came before is irrelevant because technology is changing everything so quickly and that's history, that's old news, that's industrial revolution, that's 20th century, it's unimportant. And that's a problem because we need history to understand how has this been attempted before, what were the potholes and what were the ethical considerations that we could have made a different choice and turned things differently. If we don't have history being taught. We at least need elders in our community who are still engaged, who are still aware of what's happening and can provide some of that perspective. So it's now become about constant learning. And to the extent that our elders stay up with that, they remain a vital part of our economy and a vital part of our innovation landscape because understanding what didn't go right the first time I think is a really important thing to carry on into the future. I have to say that in the early days of the internet, I, along with all of my colleagues at Wired and everybody in the tech industry, felt the same way, which was whatever is good for the internet is good for humanity. So just don't mess it up. Like don't come in and try and regulate it and don't tax it and don't mess with it. Don't try and guide it because it is going to emerge and we need to see what emerges and let that happen. The difference 
between the digital revolution and the neobiological revolution is literally a question of life and death. So the risk-reward profile in the digital revolution looks very different from the risk-reward profile with the neobiological revolution. We need to be more thoughtful with this one, and we need to engage the public much earlier 